Church. Everyone, welcome to our weekly worship experience. This right here is our iPreview. It's where we dive into all of our announcements and events that are happening here at Infinite. Before we dive into it, everyone, give it up and welcome all of our first time guests today. If you are a first time guest, we really do appreciate you for joining us. Before you came in the auditorium today, you received a worship guide, and inside of that worship guide is our Connect card. If you could go ahead and fill that out, and then outside here in the hallway at the black table, we'll have a couple Dream Team members where you can turn in your Connect card, and we'll give you a free Infinite t-shirt just as a way to say thank you for joining us. Plus, we also want to stay connected with you, so we encourage you to do that. Now for our announcements. Everyone, happening tonight at 6 p.m., we're having our monthly night of worship and prayer. These are incredible moments that we have every single month here at Infinite, where we come together and we pray for ministries within our church, but also for outside, for this city, for this state, for this world. Because we know here at Infinite, we have a massive impact to play in the body of Christ. And evenings like tonight, play a massive part in us fulfilling that role. So once again, that is 6 p.m. tonight right here in the auditorium. Now, throughout this week, the entire week, we've got this thing called life groups happening all across Columbus. If you aren't familiar with what a life group is, we meet in people's different homes. Some of us meet here at the church. Some people meet online via Zoom, and we get together to discuss the Bible and actually develop our relationships and grow together. We've got life groups for every age, every background, every interest, and we encourage you guys to sign up for one today. You can do that by downloading the Church Center app on your mobile device. Once you open it, go ahead and search for Infinite Church, and then you'll be added into our system and you can choose which life group that you would like to join. Now for all of our parents out there of younger kiddos, we do have iKids available in the back for kids who are in kindergarten all the way up until fifth grade iKids is a great place where kids can experience church at their level, make new friends, learn all about Jesus, play games, and you also can stay focused during the worship experience for what God has for you. So we recommend if they aren't checked in, go ahead and do that. They're going to have a good time, that's for sure. Now everyone, if you want to stay connected and updated with everything here at Infinite, give us a follow on social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. You can also look us up on YouTube. You can download the Infinite Church app so that you're always staying plugged in. And we also do want to mention that we partner with a local ministry here in Columbus, actually in Gehanna, Ohio, called Gehanna Residents in Need. Every single time that you check in on Facebook, we as Infinite donate $1 to the organization as a way to bless those in need in our community, whether it's giving them food, clothes, any non-perishables. Just know that, yes, you do let your friends know that you're here at Infinite when you check in, but there is a bigger purpose behind it, and you do help support those in need in our community, and we thank you for that. Those are all the announcements we've got for you folks this week. Thank you for joining us for yet another week. We'll see you next time right here on your iPreview.
right into the presence of God every week. Uh, we so appreciate your hard work and wow, it just feels good uh, being here today and in his presence. And I want to talk to you today. We're starting a brand new series called The Cure Series. The Cure Series. And uh, you know, we're in this pandemic and we're still in the throes of it and, and there's nothing that we would love to hear more than someone to make an announcement that we have a cure for this virus and in just two or three weeks, it's all gonna be over. Uh, we would love to hear that there is a cure. And so over the next several weeks, I want you to join me because I believe this series is gonna help us. Right off the beginning of the year, I talked about our word for infinite is health this year. We want to become healthy. And, and so I want to talk about cure. Cure means to relieve the symptoms of a disease or a condition or to restore health, soundness, or to bring about a recovery from a disease. So there's, there's a difference between a cure and a treatment. You see, the term cure means that after the treatment, the patient will no longer have that particular disease. It's over with. It's gone. It's finished. You know, but if a treatment, if you have a disease that doesn't have a cure, then they only can treat it. They can only treat the symptoms. And, you know, for example, years ago, I had uh, a stent put in my heart. And I'll never forget when I did our follow-up with the cardiologist, the cardiologist said something that just hit me like a ton of bricks. It was so weighty. It was so ominous. And he said, Mark, you have heart disease. You will always have heart disease. And there's nothing that we can do to cure it, but there are things that we can do to treat it or manage it. And, and I just, I, everything in me wanted to refuse that report. And of course, certainly I know that God is a healer, and I do believe that God has touched me and healed me. But he was letting me know that it just was a treatment, what we could do, it really wasn't a cure. And so I want to talk today about a cure. I want us to get healthy. And it's easy for us to hold on to things in life that weigh us down, like guilt and resentment and doubt and worry. The problem is when we allow all these negative emotions uh, to take up space, uh, then we don't leave any room for the goodness and the good things that God is wanting us to do in our life. I want you to just imagine your life as a container, okay? You were made to be filled with joy and peace and confidence and creativity. God made you to be filled with his goodness and with his spirit. But if you allow worry to fill your container, there'll be no space for peace. You see, there's not enough space in this container for you to have both. You're going to have to choose. You can't go above 100% capacity in your life. If you allow guilt to come into your life and fill your container with so much guilt from the past, then you are robbing yourself from being able to fill your container or your life and to, with, with confidence and to be able to live with that confidence. So the reason so so many people don't enjoy their lives is because they have allowed their containers to be filled with so much negative. There are so many contaminants and poison and infection that they don't have enough room for all the joy and the goodness and the peace of God. If I put 10% worry in here because I'm stressed out about my job and, and if I put 10 or 12% bitterness in my container because my neighbor did something against me and, and now I'm you know just bitter 
bitter about it. And, and if I put 20% guilt in, the, in my container because I've just made so many mistakes and, and I can't get past my past and, and, and it's just, you know, it's just weighing me down. And I put 9% jealousy in here and, uh, because, you know, my friends, they've got more than I do and, and their lives are better than my life. And so now I'm jealous. And if I just keep going and filling it up, then eventually my container is so filled with the negative that I don't have room for the goodness and the positive and, and, and to, in my life to even possibly reach my full potential or what we like to say around here at Infinite is our endless possibilities. We must get rid of the ugly and the putrid and the infection out of our containers if we're going to truly reach the full potential that God has for us. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 27 says, nor give place to the devil. This isn't just talking about the forces of the enemy, but it's also talking about giving place to guilt and fear and anxiety and doubt. If I just keep filling it up with all the negative emotions, then I'm not going to be able to fill it up with all the goodness. I've got to learn how to cleanse my container, to dump everything out every day before the Lord and open myself up to be full and overflowing with the Holy Spirit. You see, you can control what's in your container. You see, I'm going to protect what I allow in my container or what I allow in my life. I get to choose how uh, I'm going to empty this out or whether I'm not going to empty it out with all the negative and fill it with the Holy Spirit and fill it with the goodness and the things of God. Every morning when I wake up, I've been going the last this last month because I'm working on my own spiritual health and in other areas of my life. And every morning, I just say, God, I'm dumping my life out before you. All the hurts, all the wrongs, all the past, all the things, all the ugly, even my mistakes from yesterday, I want to cleanse it. I want to dump it out because, Lord, I want to make room for you today to fill my life with your goodness and, and your purpose and, and your creativity in my heart. I want to be able to think fresh, and, and I know I can't do it if I've got it filled with a bunch of junk. Dr. Henry Cloud says, every time you listen to fear, your world gets smaller. You see, if I keep dumping fear, I'm afraid of this virus. I'm afraid of this, you know, uh, pandemic. I'm afraid of what's going on in the world. I'm afraid for my children. I'm afraid what's going on, Pastor. See, you're filling your container with negative. You need to empty it. You need to empty it and say, I'm not going to fill it with that way because when you fill it with fear, your world gets smaller and you begin to isolate and you begin to lose fellowship with people. You've got to learn to dump it out. It can feel good to carry a grudge if someone does something to you. It can feel, it can feel somewhat rewarding as, as, as you fill your container with that grudge. But you need to say, no, I'm going to empty it out. I'm going to pour it out. I'm not going to let the enemy fill my life with all, these negative, with all these negative emotions. Being offended is not harming the other person. It's harming you. It's keeping you from your endless possibilities. It's keeping you from your full potential. I'm trying to give you the cure today, not just a treatment. I want to give you the cure. Empty your life out before the Lord and let him just obliterate all those negative feelings and negative emotions. You know, in our growth track here at Infinite, Week number two, we talk about finding freedom. We want to help you find freedom and get healthy because if you don't find freedom, the past, the guilt, the hurts, the, the wrongs, it will sabotage the future and it will sabotage what God is trying to do in your life. It takes up space for the good things that God wants to move into your life. You, you know, let's say you wake up in the morning and say, how am I going to pay my bills? You know, how am I going to get this met this week? Or what if my doctor's report this uh, later today is going to be so bad and I don't know what to do about it? Is there even a cure for it? And, you know, or will I ever get rid of this problem? You see, right away, 
You've got to discipline yourself and say, I'm not going to dwell on these thoughts. I'm going to dump this out and I'm going to cleanse out my container because I know that God has me in the palm of his hands. And I know that God is about to do something extraordinary in my life. I just know that the furthest that I could fall would be right into the hands of God and he is leading and guide me, guiding me. Just say, Say, no thanks devil I'm not gonna fill my container this morning with that junk I'm emptying it out because God is about to do a miracle in my life I know that God has his arms wide open waiting on me and God will get me to where I'm going make room today for the good things Psalm chapter 103 verse 5 says he fills my life with good things my youth is renewed like the eagles. You see, God is so desiring. He's already got plans for you. He's saying, I can't wait till later today. They don't have any idea about what I'm going to do for them. Oh, I can't. It's full. I can't get the goodness in there because they've got so much crud going on in their container. No, you get up in the morning and say, God, I empty my life out to you today. I pour it out before you because I want you to speak to me. So my question for you today, is God trying to fill your life with good things, but he can't find room to do it? Because see, you can't go above 100% capacity. Are you so full of worry, fear, and anxiety, and jealousy that you have no room for the goodness of God to fill your life? Maybe someone did you wrong, and, and you're full of bitterness, and, and you need to say, God, I forgive them and let it go because I want to be wide open and just empty for you to fill me today. That's when God can give you beauty for ashes. I'm not just talking about a treatment today. I'm talking about a cure. I'm talking about us getting healthy before the Lord so he can really do in our church, so he can really do in your life what he wants to do. But it's up to us to make the choice to empty it out. Perhaps a coworker got your promotion that you were praying for, that you were desiring. Someone else got it. And you know good and well that you were more qualified. You worked harder for it. Or you could say, God, I know that you have plans for me. I know that that closed door means that you have something greater for me. I'm going to pour it out. I'm not going to get caught up in that, God. I'm not going to get jealous because I know that you are gearing me up for something even better, something that works with my schedule, my personality, my skills, my creativity. You see, what you're doing is you're making room for God to fill your container with something good. The reason why some people are not filled with energy and life and enthusiasm because they have allowed their containers to become so contaminated. And yet you can say, God, I'm emptying it, and I want you to fill it with your spirit. I want the Holy Spirit to be in my container so it acts as a filter, and it doesn't allow those, when those contaminants come in, when those infections, when those poisons come in my life, the Holy Spirit begins to flush it out, say, nope, not in here. There's not room for you in here. Uh, this container is going to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I don't want to get old and crouchy and grumpy and cantankerous. I want to, I want to get old and have life and energy and enthusiasm because the older I get the more I, I am filled with the goodness of God I want to be so full of him that every time someone comes around me they can sense they can see wow they're just filled with the goodness of God you see bitterness is an infection guilt is an infection jealousy is an infection and it begins to eat away at the purpose and the destiny in your life, in your container. I'm bitter because someone did me wrong. I'm sour because someone walked out of my life. Why don't you just today say, you know what? Not another day. Not another day. I'm going to pour it out. 
You see, King David, he, he was an expert at emptying out every day so his container could be full. You know, you think about King David right from the beginning. His own father overlooked him when, when Samuel came to find one of the boys to be a king. He went through all of his brothers, and, and they never went and got David. You talk about feeling bad. I think, my goodness, you know, what am I, chopped liver? You know, you would leave me out in the field. I mean, at this kind of an opportunity, if they went through all the brothers and that didn't work, why wouldn't you come and get me? Samuel literally had to ask, are there any more? And then one day, you know, David goes out while the, uh, his brothers are out fighting the Philistines and Goliath is coming out saying, give me a man. And David shows up and the brothers resent him. You know, you would think David would start, man, why is everybody always overlooking me? And then later down the road, King Saul is trying to literally kill David. He's trying to take him out, and David could have gotten his, his container all contaminated and say, why is, why is life so unfair? Why is everybody out to get me? Why is everybody, even the king himself, would like to see me killed? But see, David was a master of pouring it all out and getting over it. In fact, he said uh, in Psalm chapter 51, 10, he says, create in me a clean heart. He means saying, I'm emptying this out, God. Wash it, cleanse it. He said, oh God, and renew a steadfast or a right spirit in me. You see, David knew how to empty it all out, pour all the ugly out, pour the victim mentality out, and say, God, fill me today. I open this container so you can give me. You know why? David understood that his purpose and his destiny as the king of Israel was in jeopardy if he didn't empty it out. He knew he had to pour it out if he was ever going to reach his God-given destiny. And that is the same with you and I. If we are going to truly reach the potential of what God wants to do in our lives, then we will have to master every day pouring it out. Uh, yeah, it's not easy. Yes, negative feelings and negative emotions come to us, but we've got to say, no thank you, devil. I'm pouring it out. I'm not dwelling on that. I'm not going to get caught up in that. David could have thought he was the biggest victim. He could have gotten caught up in it, but he didn't, and he learned how to empty it out. Don't allow your future to be compromised by all the negative emotions that you are allowing in your container. No, you need to empty it out. You know, it's easy to live with regrets, thinking that I should have done this differently. I wish I could have raised my kids better. I wish I, could, I wish I would have applied myself more in school. I wish I would have finished college. And you could live with all these regrets. But see, you can't do anything about your yesterdays. you got to pour it out. you got to pour it out so you can open up yourself to what God wants to do. do. Don't go through life looking in the rear view mirror and, and with living in regrets. No, you can make a choice today, a decision today to say, nope, I'm not gonna let all those poisons get in my container. I'm gonna open it up and allow God to move in my life. Hebrews chapter eight, verse 12 says, for I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their lawless deeds I will remember no more. If God can pour it out, if God can forget all my past, if he can cleanse me, then why can't I pour out the container and empty it out, clean it out, and say, God, I'm ready for you to fill me with your spirit, with your goodness, with fresh creativity, with fresh anointing. I'm ready, God, for a fresh start. You know, we don't... We don't uh, understand a lot but what we you don't deserve all the things that come in your way but it's for the mercy of God you say but pastor I don't deserve it you're probably right but his mercy we none of us deserve it it's his unmerited favor and his mercy that says I if you'll empty it out if you'll come to me clean and just say God forgive me then I will fill your life full of my goodness for your life. There was a story about Mary Johnson I read recently. She was a single mother, and she had a son that was 20 years old. She had her only one son. And one night he was out late, and a young man by the name of Oshia, uh, they got to arguing late one night, and Oshia pulled out a gun and shot Mary's only son. Obviously, she was so angry, so hurt, so crushed at losing her only son. 
And, uh, and then to top that off, they only gave him second degree murder, which made it even more hard on her. She became even more angry and she became a recluse and, and just isolated herself and her world got smaller and smaller. And after several years, she finally woke up one day and realized, I can't continue to live with all this in my heart, with all this poison. And so she reached out to the prison to see if she could get in touch with Oshia. She just wanted to go talk to this young man that killed her son, and he would not respond. He would not answer. He did not want to talk to her because, see, he was dealing with his own guilt and his own shame. And so finally, after many attempts, Oshia agreed to meet with Mary, and, and they met and when she walked in the door and into the room where he was, she just walked right over to him and grabbed him and hugged him and they wept and they wept and they wept. They were pouring out all the poison, all the hurt, all the anger, and they were just pouring it out. And you know what? It was so interesting because they wound up, because of that, she wound up getting him out of jail he, she, he wound up, she wound up becoming her spiritual son. And they started a ministry called From Death to Life. And now they travel around the country ministering in high schools. You see, a purpose and a destiny because they were willing to forgive and let it go. Then God could come in and help them reach their potential of helping many, many other people with a lot of hurts. You see, towards the end of Jesus' life, he had suffered rejection, he had suffered betrayal, he had suffered being mocked by soldiers, falsely accused of crimes, and finally, he was hanging on the cross with a crown of thorns crunched down over his head. And Jesus' last words, you see, Jesus understood, if I'm going to reach my potential, then even Jesus understood, I'm going to have to empty it out. I, and he says in his final words, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. You see, he understood for him to fulfill his purpose. He had to pour it out. He had to empty his container so the purpose could come in in the goodness of God. And thank goodness Thank God that he did because when he gave his last breath, he was open for his purpose and his destiny, which allows you and I to be able to have salvation and to have the mercy and the grace of God. You see, today, no matter where you're from and where, whatever's going on in your life, you could pour it all out today and start fresh and new and say, God, fill me with your spirit. It starts with repentance. It starts with you turning it all upside down and saying, God, I want you to fill me with your spirit. I want to pray with you right now, and I want to pray with you that God will help you. I'm hoping this message is speaking to your heart and that you are saying, yes, I want this freedom. I want to find freedom from my past. I want God to pour out his goodness in my life. I'm ready for something fresh. I'm tired of all the ugly that's been in my life. I've been storing it up. Today, I'm going to fill it out. Let the tears fall. Let the tears flow in your life as you get all clean and washed in the goodness of God and Acts 2 38 tells us they asked Peter what should we do and he said repent empty it out be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission or for the cleansing or for the blotting out of your sins then you shall be filled with the Holy Ghost with the gift of the Holy Ghost let me pray with you right now. Father, I'm asking you to touch this individual that's watching right now, wherever they're watching from. I pray, God, that you'll just begin to move. Let your presence be manifest where they are right now. I ask you, God, to pour out your presence as they empty it all out. Lord, there may be some tears right now that's flowing. There may be just, God, a cleansing that's going on.
on in their life, I'm asking you cleanse it. Then I'm asking you, Lord, fill them with your Holy Spirit. Give them the gift of the Holy Ghost. And I pray right now in Jesus' name, let it be so. We declare it in Jesus' name. I thank you for joining us today on this live stream. And if you have never been baptized in the precious name of Jesus Christ, would you contact us? Maybe you live somewhere else around the country. We'll connect you to a church. Um, or if you live in this area, I hope that you'll come and be in person with us here at Infinite. God is doing so many incredible and amazing things. And so I encourage you, join us, be with us, connect with us on all of our different social medias and, and become a part of our Infinite family. We want to grow with you and we want you to become healthy this year. God bless you. Carol and I love you and I hope you have an amazing week. Thank you everyone for joining us for our online worship experience this morning. We are very, very appreciative that you even took the time out of your morning to join us today. If this was your first time watching, feel free to text the word STREAM to the number 97000. That's 97000. When you do that, we would love to connect with you and just send a free gift your way for saying thank you for joining us. And now what we'd like to do is get into our final act of worship here at Infinite Church. This is for our tithes and our offering. We have a few different options and ways that you can tithe and give to Infinite Church. The first way is the easiest. You can text any amount to the number 84321. Or you can give online at infinitechurch.org or download our Infinite Church app and go to the giving section there. And last but not least, if you do prefer the old school method, you can always mail a check or cash to 175 East Main Street, New Albany, Ohio, 43054. We greatly appreciate you guys staying and remaining faithful even throughout COVID happening. We are praying for you and your families. Thank you for joining us yet again. We'll see you guys next week.